Hello and welcome to the Screen Chronicles. I'm Colby and with me as always is Steve. And we have a very special guest today. If you're listening to us, you probably know him as Eric from The Last Kingdom. Please welcome Christian Ilborg to the Screen Chronicles. Thanks for coming on, Christian. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. How are you doing today, Christian? I'm good. I'm good. I was just out for a run. and The weather's quite gritty. Just like an episode of The Last Kingdom. There you go. (laughs) But yeah, it's good. It's good. I mean, we're all, I guess we're all in this um, pandemic together right now. It's just isolation. And uh, I'm in Stockholm, uh, which is not, which we have kind of like, it's not really a lockdown here. So basically the same. (laughs) Uh, Oh, really? How is that? How has that worked? Because we've pretty much been shut down like crazy. I know. Um, I know. I, I came from... LA okay and flew back to Stockholm uh, so I wasn't I wasn't planning on coming here to Sweden uh, so, oh really but but just you know during this uh, pandemic uh, it and it was a shock for me to just realize people were sitting outside you know drinking and you know and eating and you know were you know socializing but yeah. they are keeping the distance of 1.5 okay. years uh still um the gym's open and 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 schools are open and stuff like interesting. that. interesting that's very interesting does it seem to be working there for you guys i think so I yeah think so. Um, let's see i mean yeah we, it's hard to tell now hard to tell yeah exactly. so what do you do during the day to keep yourself busy <laughs> well right now since it's a pandemic you're kind of fun employed aren't you uh but um, well, I was um, reading scripts. I have one script that I'm, I'm going to read after this. Uh, so I'm cool. still, the there, it will probably do a lot of stuff for me to do when the, all of this, this is over, I guess in, 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 in the summer or something like that. But right now it's, I'm chilling like a villain. Cool. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice, you know, it's not nice that we're in a pandemic or anything like that, but to have a little bit more time off sometimes is nice. But anyway, yeah. um, we Steve and I first saw you from The Last Kingdom as Eric, and Eric is one of the coolest characters in The Last Kingdom for sure. Now we love our Danes, obviously, and, and um, this the second half of season two storyline is probably our favorite. I don't know if I speak for you, Steve. Yeah, yeah, well, for sure, yeah. It's season two overall is my I think my favorite season of The Last Kingdom, and yeah. we just did not see the second half where it was going, or, or I mean where it went. We didn't see it going there. Yeah, um, but we'll talk more about The Last Kingdom a little bit later. Uh, but first, we just kind of want to know how you got into acting. I started acting when I was a kid. I was like oh. five, six years old. I felt it was a good way to escape <laughs> reality. Oh. I took like, you know, theater classes when I was a kid, musical, stuff like that, dancing. Uh, so I've been doing it for a very long time right now. So... <laughs> Uh, but it was basically theater to begin with. So that was the beginning. What sort of plays were you doing then? Everything, everything, man. It's just, uh, yeah. And a lot of physical theater as well. So, um, dance theater. I wasn't really planning on doing, you know, working internationally with film. That wasn't really my plan. It was just something that happened, to be honest. Uh, Cool. Cool. So do you prefer, um, doing shows and films or do you prefer doing something on stage i haven't been on stage for five years now it's been oh wow busy. well i've been busy filming so um i do miss theater and shows and you know i miss the stage i do uh so i would probably after this pandemic do something uh, on stage as well it's oh, cool how did you get involved into the last kingdom then I did. I auditioned for uh, Utrecht um, um, to begin with. That was really 2014, I guess. That's when I got got my first agent, uh, my UK agent. And this was, I, I mean, the last king was my first self tape I sent my agent, and uh, and you know, and then I auditioned for a couple of other characters as well. So. Yeah, it, but I've, I realized not until I found, when I found, when I got Eric, 
uh, I realized this is more um, hand in glove if you <laughs> um, and most definitely when 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 I did the uh, callback with Bjorn with mm. Bjorn like, you know, fantastic it, dynamic you guys have yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. that is so cool yeah, you and Bjorn the, the he per portrays Siegfried your brother in the show uh, The Last Kingdom we, we Kobe was just showing me a clip uh, before we started here of uh, the two of you singing uh, Brother. Uh, it was like a promotion for season three. <laughs> like Wicked Game or something. It was cool. Well, kind of, yeah. Uh, it's just like, yeah, it had like four chords, just like Wicked Game. Um, um, yeah, I think we used lines from, from, from the script. From, yeah, you, know. you did. Yeah. So. Don't do this to me. <laughs> so you guys are musicians. So <laughs> it said you guys were watching from Valhalla, <laughs> yeah, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, when Siegfried does go to Valhalla and meets you there, um, what would you say to him as Eric? It took you so long. Uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now you're sorry? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was predestined that they both would die. Uh, yeah. It would be boring to see one of us, you know, in season three or four. You, you know. Well, we would love to see it in those seasons, but. See for an Eric. Uh, and of course, character wise, I wouldn't create Eric the way I did with if Bjorn went there, there or see oh. the thing that, you know, uh, I think we it was kind of very much a teamwork in in in, in developing the, the the characters as well uh, because my Eric was always you know mm, he wanted to know what Siegfried was doing all the time you know that was his main purpose you know to to please his brother and in the end he couldn't he f yeah he was powerless over the over over the fact that he was just falling in love yeah. I guess and uh love you know it's a crazy motherfucker it is <laughs> man girls can just wreck <laughs> things man <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so you said that when you got the role eric it was more hand and glove what kind of similarities do you have with that character i guess the vulnerability to be honest and um i didn't want to portray a, a Viking the way you usually see him with, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> of course I gained a lot of weight and it was like bulky. It was like oh, yeah? Viking. But is uh, yeah, I gained like 50, um, like 30 pounds for that character. Really? Yeah. So what'd you do to gain weight? I ate a lot. Just uh, ate a lot? I don't even know how, but I did back then. So I ate a lot of meat. Um, and I... No protein, and yeah. uh, you know, I was working out a lot. I I, I changed my way of working out as well. And, and cool. I was living in London at that time, so I, I remember I went to this. <laughs> I was eating like fast food. I went to this gym, and then I had like fried chicken on my way back home. Uh, yeah, so I was eating. I was like, but I, you know, you and then I. That's every day for us here. <laughs> Sorry? So that's every day for us here in the U.S. <laughs> Why do you think I left? No, I'm just uh, no, so, and then I did a lot of CrossFit with, um, oh. with Bjorn in Hungary. Oh. During, oh. Uh, while, as we were, we were staying at the same hotel, so we were always, you know, with, it was me, Bjorn, uh, Magnus, um, uh, Salman Song, you know, the, uh, the other Swede and, yeah. and Arnas, Mark. Yeah, yeah, we're all hanging out, working out like every day. Uh, basically. Quite a crew right there. Yeah. yeah. Alex, Alex as well. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it, uh, we were just talking to Adrian Boucher who told us it's kind of tough to stay in shape uh, when you're on a set. <laughs> like you come in in shape, but because... Yeah, the, well, the catering or... Oh, no, just uh, the time, I guess, to not go to the gym and stuff. Did you find that? Or? We had this great place where we actually could do a lot of, you know, pull-ups and stuff. You cool. Know, uh, like a performance area where we could just, you know, do Olympic lifting and stuff like that. Uh, 
that was good for these characters, you know, you know, heavy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I agree. I, I don't know why Adrian said that because he's, I mean, look at him. He's, uh, <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> oh, wow, that man, he's got some muscles, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's a big dude. Uh, yeah. No. Magnus, too. Magnus, he was a, a strong man, too, wasn't he? He was a, uh, yeah, like, world strong man in Sweden uh, many years ago. Not, well, this was, um, uh, no, uh, yeah, he's really big. Um, let us let us not forget about Waylon. <laughs> Waylon, <laughs> where is he, by the way? <laughs> Waylon was a uh, was a bouncer. He was like oh. he was working at this place. So he, he wanted us to go to this this bad nightclub. Sorry, uh, <laughs> like I don't so know. Just, That's okay. Like, oh, there's my gang. It's the Vikings. You know, and Waylon was standing there. It was so big. Uh, no, it's a kind, kind heart. You know, like a big man with a, you know, very kind heart. He, yeah, he looks like a guy that would, you know, without even question, hit anybody you want um, <laughs> if you say please. <laughs> Just like. <laughs> so, any more similarities that you have with Eric? You said vulnerability. I don't have a brother. My, I'm, I'm, I don't have a, you know, a, I don't. I have two sisters. So I never okay. grew up brothers um you have to relate to someone in your life you know now as we are in isolation you know it can't be there's nothing like being in isolation because you're always relating to someone like you two guys you are relating to one another and right. and i felt like uh that's also i mean i love working that way as an actor as well so um just getting the chance to work with um Bjorn, he was always re always reacting to something. Uh, I would say now that I'm quite similar to Eric in that way that he's quite calm. I guess when he found love, he found peace as well. Uh, yeah. At the end, I guess I'm quite happy and you know, um, like yeah, I can. I'm at ease in my heart. <laughs> cool. Very very cool. Very cool. Any challenges when it came to playing Eric? Yeah, I'm not good. I'm not that good at stunt, so it w that was challenging. Any in particular? Fighting scene with Bjorn, uh, with Siegfried in the end. Uh, I I rehearsed that a lot, and I remember the one with Pick was the one I when I was just like <sighs> smashing it. Uh, but Bjorn was also like, oh, fine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because I was so angry because I didn't get it. You know, I was like, oh, and, you know, and the end, I I was. I, I guess my pace was different. Had that. you had any fighting experience coming into the show? No, not really. Uh, well, on stage, on stage, but not uh, from the camera. So um, uh, I learned from the best uh, on set as well. So it's just like, and Jeff uh, was, uh, I mean, he's a stuntman. Yeah, so we was, talked to him. Um, yeah, I mean, he's a pro. <laughs> well, you know, it was like the first time I saw him with that sword and you know, like, you know, everything. I'm like, you do this, you know, in your spare time? Like, yeah, I'm a stuntman. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was like, oh, so everyone's this good? <laughs> but yeah, and you get, to, you get to beat him up a little bit too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that was a perfect match. The three amigos, Yep and Bjorn. Oh my and god. So much fun. And well, season one had set such a precedent for how cool the Vikings and the Danes are. And you guys really kind of carried the torch through season two. You get kind of coming from Abba. And you guys kind of have hints of Abba in like the way that I guess more Siegfried does in the way that he's so curious about how the cross, you know, kills a man <laughs> yeah. and stuff. And um I love so that I just, part. Oh yeah. my God. That's one of our favorites. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, could you tell us a little about maybe filming that scene in London? Well, I've had so much fun doing that one. And uh, uh, that was actually my favorite day. One of, one of my favorite days on set because it was just so fun to. <laughs> I think it's so funny in that one. It was like, yeah. I don't understand. You know, he's like so interested in, in what's going on. <laughs> How, How does do this you kill a man? How does this kill a man? Like, and you're um, getting annoyed. You're like, come on, let's just chop his head off. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Uh, it's just like a uh, day in the life of being a Viking, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, no, that was a great, and it was so fun. I was like, uh, speaking of Jeffe, he was, he was actually, he was in the scene a lot, but he's not in, you know, in frame, but he was just, we were actually communicating a lot with him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, scene as well and just like having fun all three of us and totally. uh, yeah and the and the crew of course uh but it was also i mean it's also that kind you know that day because usually it was a lot of me and bjorn or yeppe or um well and, and hessen or dagfin and you know right um, or or millie uh right. Apple, of course um and but this particular day this scene was with you know with everyone so it was just i was talking to magnus you know it's like you have food lord whatever he said yeah. I can't, <laughs> you know i can't remember but uh it was fun it was fun it, there was a lot of thing happening that day also i remember next day i was the one who was gonna stand up and say on your feet whatever every man on their feet you said, um, every man and steve and i when we watched that by the way we watched it together uh in our apartment when you yelled every man uh to their feet we got up and we were out the door i'll tell you what <laughs> <laughs> that's how <laughs> I'm, i remember what we the scenes we shot before that was just me being like oh brother how are you we're gonna do this da, da, da. Yeah. And Siegfried was always like, ah, and then it was like, oh, I get to scream. You know, I was just, oh, I was like, oh, happy as a kid in the candy store. You know, I was just like, oh, now I get, and I remember Bjorn was sitting there like, man, he's screaming, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, now I get, this is my time to shine. <laughs> oh, man. But it was, uh, yeah, it's fun. It's, it, it was, um, yeah, it was really fun doing that. The days were so different. Uh, okay. Day, yeah. Uh, Interesting. And you had you had like one week of you know battle scene week, or and then the you know the fellowship. It's kind of like a fellowship when you <laughs> when you when you work so close and intimate yeah. with one. Another. So you know everyone at the same hotel. Everyone you know. It seems like a really tight cast overall, from what we can tell. Super tight. I just. I I watched James' um, film that's on. I uh, did a film for it was it's on the Instagram account. For, a day in the life of Aldhelm. Exactly. So, and I got goosebumps because yeah. that's James. He was always like looking for a camera in in Budapest or whatever. Yeah. And man, I I I was laughing so. so yeah, he, that's exactly how it is. You know, we just, um, we just talked to James and he said his wife actually um, made that. He made that. I know. Yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he has a bunch of cameras and it, it, uh, his behind his seat we saw up on his wall. He said he, he tries to use them all, though, he says. So that was, oh, that's pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah. I was going to, I missed their wedding because I was filming in another country, which was uh, so sad. Oh. But, so you uh, guys all stay in touch then, too, I guess, even after well, you finished. I to Toby was in LA recently and every time I'm in London I tried to you know I met Arnis in LA of course uh because we were there at the same time and oh. Andre Ericsson also the Norwegian actor yeah I keep well yeah and I meet Bjorn uh of course we yeah. work out we still work out together uh, oh do you oh sweet yeah cool. that's uh, awesome that's awesome did you know coming on to season two that that was going to be it for you? That it was just going to be one season? Or did you find out later in the season that you were going to die? Uh, no, I knew. You knew? Thing is, I, I didn't know the development of the character because I didn't, uh, I read parts of, I didn't read the book. Uh, okay. To begin with. And then I was like, well, this is interesting. And then I started reading the book. But when I got the, when I got the offer, I, I didn't know the that he was gonna fall in love and uh, uh, the thing with Athelflaed. So that came later, and they. Well, it's in the book, but it's, I didn't really know anything about it uh, until, until I actually digged uh, deeper. I did know that I was gonna. I I knew from the beginning that I was gonna die, and I thought I was gonna die earlier in the show. Oh, really? I, yeah, and uh, so I was. Uh, 
it was between that and another part. And I was like, okay, I, I'm going to do this, <laughs> you know, because I was, <laughs> and I'm glad I did. I, I picked the right yeah. one. Um, it's always hard to pick and choose, you know, uh, you never know. Yeah. What totally. definitely makes season two, uh, at least for me, oh, well, in for Kobe as well, our favorite season or the second half, our favorite part of the season two is your relationship with Bjorn really sells it as brothers who care about each other. And that's the betrayal, not, not so much betrayal, but then when you choose to go off with Ethelfled at the end, just the heartbreak between the two of you. I mean, that's what really just gets the emotional yeah. impact there. So it's, it's really the, the, the bond between the two of you that really sells that scene, you know, from the rest of that season. I would say the heart, I mean, there's heartbreak too from Ethelflaed and stuff at the end, but the, I think it's the brotherly heartbreak that hits the viewer the most, you know? Yeah, I think so as well. Uh, of course, it's always, you know, I've, I've, you know, the gentle giant, as I read somewhere. <laughs> it's always like, oh, the man with the, the, the Viking with the big heart, you know, but his, yeah. it, it beats for his brother, you know? Um, and then... He, you know, he falls in love. Of course, you can do that. But it's, uh, I guess, every move they make, every decision is is based on, you know, he, not what his brother wants to do, but what they, of course, they want to take over the whole, you know, uh, <laughs> everything. Yeah. Of course. And I would, I would love to see that happen. Uh, yeah. And see what, and I've, you know, brothers, like, you know, you know, friends who are, you know, done a lot of crazy stuff and still you love them, right? You just go, hey, you know. You get it. Hey, yeah. We've been there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? So it's like, even though this guy, Siegfried, is just like uh, losing it sometimes, it's just, oh, well, uh, it has to resonate in Eric because he, he's the same. I mean, there's, you know, the, they're mirroring each other, the two of them. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. What was it like working with Millie Brady, who plays Ethel Fled then um, through the rest of the season? Then what was it like working with her? She's the coolest cat. I mean, she's the she's so humble and so so funny. She's so easy to work with as well. No, I love her. She's so so funny um, and not at all complicated in that sense. You. This is actually something I picked up from Harry McIntyre. Okay. Uh, he said he said like okay I got I have like five different decisions. I've 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 made the home- homework for every scene. So I got these five different ideas about the scene the character was you know and hmm. usually I'm not going to be I I won't use any of them. That's what he's like I'm not using any of them. I I have five and I just throw them away, you know, that feeling and and uh, when I was uh, when I was working with Millie, everything was just like, "What are we doing? Should we just, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> play with it." And then yeah. uh, that was uh, that was amazing. That was funny. She's very rad and 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 brilliant. I think she's a brilliant actress as well. One of the great scenes you guys do together, you say to her that uh, your father wanted to name you, um, or maybe your mother wanted to name you after a wolf that chases the moon. <laughs> or something like that and yeah. and i you know i've tried that pickup line countless times it didn't work for me as well as it worked for you so <laughs> oh you... that was the hardest line ever to be really? honest yeah that was it's like you have to say it with a straight face you know it was hard i tell you that but it's uh oh thanks to evie she was like are you <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> you have to have some other subtext um deep, deep, deeply rooted down, you know, um, underneath that one, uh, because it was hard to, you know, it's not a good pickup line, don't use that. <laughs> oh, I totally thought it was. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just Crazy. go, you're precious, and that's it, you know? <laughs> or say, I think, you, I think you, do, you do nail it, though. You go, I have never seen a face like this, and I see it every time I close my eyes or something. Maybe that will be the one to use. <laughs> that's <laughs> No, that scene is that really was a touching scene. You guys killed that scene. Another scene we we did allude to the scene where you um, beat up Heston a little bit. You punch him. Uh, Millie also beat him up a little bit. And um, then you, it's a raw scene where you yell, 
precious. Could you maybe walk us through that scene a little bit? Oh, yeah. I felt like I wanted Eric to lose it because he was always contained. Like, you just like, mm, what's going on now? What's going on now? When she was just like gone, he lost it. Uh, and I, was, I remember I did some ADR for that one. And they said in the room, uh, can you just tone it down? <laughs> the cream is hard, but it's like, uh, I'm like, why? No, because, you know, because they felt like it was, it's, it's like, it's not really common you scream that much in the scene and stuff like that. It's like, no. And I said, no, this is, it's Eric, he's just loose. Yeah, and, and, and I'm glad, as so I just, I scream. <laughs> I guess I was screaming even more in the studio at the, you know, doing, because I was just like, oh, this is exactly how I want Eric to, especially when he, I, I, he grabs Dagfin, right? And he, he, uh, and he screams, where is she? Whatever. Yes. Uh, yeah. The one. And when she, she is precious, he's just like, oh, you know, it's, um, in that scene, he, he's not aware that he feels so much for Ethel Flag. Uh, uh, so still kind of building those feelings a little bit there. Well, I think yeah. that he's surprised, especially like uh, when he closed the door and was like, oh, oh, well, fuck, I need to get out of here. <laughs> something's, <laughs> something's happening. And he has, this is the first time ever he's, he's fallen in love and this happens to him. So yeah, yeah you do he, have a weird look when you leave the room there. You right. like you look at you like that should not have happened. Yeah, and it's interesting. You're you're kind of like I shouldn't be feeling these things either. You know, when you fall in love, it's like oh, should I kiss her or you know what? <laughs> you know, you have no idea. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's kind of possessive as well. As well mm. You know, suddenly like uh, you can't you cannot drop that narrative of 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 you're actually exactly like the audience you know you don't want to drop the narrative this is my this is you know the woman in my life of my life you know this is the one i want yeah. to you know have kids with and you know live with and, and then suddenly you realize uh, uh you might lose everything uh, wow let's say there's another scenario where maybe you guys did escape what do you think uh, you and ethel flood would have done we would have gone to Sicily for a holiday. No, I'm just kidding. There you <laughs> no. go. There you go. There you go. Uh, I guess we, Vikings back in the days were actually quite, they were hunter gatherers and they were, you know, like families. Uh, so I think they would have stayed together for the rest of their lives. You think they would have like gone somewhere into hiding, just get away from everything and. Probably, and, you know, build a family, you know, create a, you know, everything. and then probably they would, Eric would go out and, you know, hunt or, yeah, uh, but I don't think he would start and, you know, create an army or some, something that Seifert would have done, probably. Eric would probably just feel like this is, um, this is the abundance of my life right now, uh, this family. Cool. And now I don't need anything more. Well, <laughs> Ethel fled was, uh, she did get pregnant though. Uh, and she did carry your, your child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and then we actually, we got to see your child in season four of the last kingdom. She's, she's a young girl now. And there was actually a scene, uh, that Colby thought that maybe we might see Christian again here. Oh uh, yeah. I was hoping when, when the, the, <laughs> the young girl is having, she sees like a, a Raven and she, did, what did you watch season four? I haven't seen that. Oh. I know about the scene. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen it yet. So the thing is, there's just what season one and two on not Netflix here in Sweden, which is ah, oh, that's a <laughs> bummer. I know it's a bummer, but I watched season three in in the U.S. I haven't seen anything of season four yet. Um, okay, okay. Oh, this isn't too big of a spoiler or anything. <laughs> not spoiler. I guess okay. the people who are watching this or they okay. have seen season four already, right? Yeah. Oh yeah it's, yeah, it's been long enough now at this point, right? <laughs> totally, totally. Oh no, I'm talking about the <laughs> um, we, have, we did think though. <laughs> you wanted Eric to show up, yeah. We uh, thought maybe she'd have a vision or something, or you know, there was something going on in the show that you know she could maybe hallucinate or something. Yeah. Um, and she was following a raven, and maybe they did intentionally 
do this to make people think that, oh, Eric, we're going we're gonna to see her father. Um, but anyway, when you watch it, when you do get a chance to see it, maybe um, you'll see what we're talking about. But yeah. I know, I know there was, I, uh, yeah. Um, that's a good, um, I'm not going to say anything. Uh, I, I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, don't incriminate yourself. But no. if, if they did ask you to reprise your role as Eric in come back and say in season five for a vision or a dream or hallucination or something, would you do it? Would you be willing to do that? Like Eric, like a younger Eric or? Like- oh, like, um, like Leia Fritch in season three, kind of they came back for some visions. Oh, yeah, I did. Well, of course I would. Of course I would. Um, I'm growing the beard, so. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of uh, the look, did you have any input on the Eric look? We, we heard Magnus actually did a lot of input to his, um, what his character looked like. I was filming another thing, another show in, oh. in Sweden just before. And that's actually what, why I gained weight, because I needed to play like this, this biker, kind of like Sans of Anarchy. Cool. Character. So they shaved my... You shave me on my, you know, on the sides, stuff right. like. So that's the that's the look for Eric and Siegfried. As I was filming that, you know, before we die was the name of the show. As I was filming before we die, before we even started, uh, Bjorn. I didn't know that well. I didn't know Bjorn that well. I, okay. you know, colleagues when you know, actors in Sweden know each other, one another. So, uh, but he was texting me <laughs> a picture of him <laughs> shaved. It was like, and a curse word is like. <laughs> Hilborg, you know, it's like effing Hilborg, you know, it's like, oh, <laughs> sorry. So it was like, oh, we love that, you know, look, let's shave his head as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And then um, I guess a lot of the tattoos, this, was this one tattoo that was, uh, <laughs> I didn't know what it was. It was kind of like a raven and a fox. Okay. Oh, you see the raven probably when you when yeah so it was a raven tattoo and and a fox <laughs> and i okay. didn't know what kind of so i, I thought it was like a faven or uh, a rocks no something like there's just like <laughs> and but we created together some of the tattoos and uh and facial hair of course uh, uh i had some extensions because i i couldn't look that much for the other character and then i i finished it just before we started uh in the beginning of the last king i think so i had i was probably doing a lot of things at the same time i was back yeah. and forth. i was doing uh, one week i was in four different countries oh my god filming jeez <laughs> busy guy jeez yeah it was a busy time yeah not like now <laughs> get to slow down yeah, man. like <laughs> <laughs> slow down yeah what were some of your favorite scenes to shoot? You had already talked about the uh, the scene with the cross where you were trying to figure out crucifixion. Uh, what were some of your other favorite scenes then to shoot? Uh, I really like riding the the ones uh, the scene with Guthred, and uh, he's a great actor. I I love him, uh, and uh, it was just a bliss to watch him work. Uh, you know, so I was, I was, we were just sitting there looking at one another and he was just like uh doing something just before the camera was in like rolling and it was like what is he doing you know <laughs> and i was like what who's his acting teacher and stuff like that and then i got the chance to meet his acting teacher in in la as well oh. so i had a session with her and uh so so i'm uh uh you know you get some you get inspired enthusiasm you know that i really love uh you know to get inspired by people working with people. And that was a day when yeah. you, that's so much fun. Uh, and it was kind of like the, that was the first day I met uh, Alexander and we have a scene when he's just like, so everything was just like, and Bjorn was really like <laughs> aggressive, <laughs> like, take it easy, you know? So everything was kind of like, as it should be. Uh, it was just like, we were kind of like a clash between, um, um, fiction and reality, um, yeah. that, uh, which was so nice. Uh, I love that day. Yeah, it was kind of, it was really good energy and, uh, 
and of course the days when we rehearse a lot of this scene when we when we capture Ethelflaed that day yeah fighting and you know uh, that took us a couple of days to rehearse and then we did it in one take oh wow that, that was fun that was really fun um, that's a crazy scene because the way they film it they they have somebody running with a camera i think and like yeah they fall over um that was it was chas one of the what the yeah. great yeah i mean he, and he's brilliant but he yeah, actually, we're hoping to talk to him too It'd he hurt himself. he hurt himself during that really time. yeah so they had to take yeah they had to use another cameraman uh and he hurt himself as well because he, i mean it's chaos <laughs> it is well no it is chaos well I, and it's uh, it's kind of like a dance you need to i mean when you see the whole crew of uh uh norsemen in the beginning when they like we got scots scots to kill you know that yeah. part and yeah yeah yeah. that's a dance i mean we have to just like because then the camera moves with you right. and you go and say hi to heston and then you introduce heston so it's just like okay get out okay <laughs> <laughs> You come again to another because you know because you really want to, like this is this is Jeppe this is Bjorn you know you just want to uh, promote these characters and and uh, yeah. expose them to we actually killed what's his name Rick Rankin which is so I don't know if that's if anyone knows that but we actually had a scene when Rick. Um, and he's a great actor. He's, and of course, since he's an outlander, he <laughs> they wanted to keep him. So it's like, totally. what? We just killed him. It's like, <laughs> yeah, we, you know, we well, you know. <laughs> we'll probably not save that scene. So we had a scene when we actually killed him. And me, uh, it was uh, Heston, uh, Siegfried, and Eric who killed uh, that monk or whatever. It yeah. Was. Hmm. The one that started that uprising. Yeah, exactly. In Effowich. Yeah after he starts it uh start yeah they go they actually go and kill him uh but now they just cut that out that yeah. cut. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how'd you guys kill him just curious uh we 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 cut his throat that was that's what we did good um, choice good choice duh colby duh right. <laughs> there's a, i have a picture of it i have a picture of it oh okay Ooh. <laughs> cool uh, no and i've I don't know why. Maybe I'm saying too much, but but they probably wanted to keep him for a reason. And and uh, but but most definitely just because he's a great actor. Uh, yeah, the great. show is pretty dense though too. I mean, uh, every episode has a lot that happens as far as plots and, and yeah. story. So I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of things that have to get cut. It's uh, you know. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. And there's a lot of good actors in it. I mean, I love. Uh, when I saw the first season, and I saw saw Jonas uh, Malmö, this another Swedish actor, he's playing uh, the one with the one, what's his name? Scarpa. Uh, Scarpa. Yeah. Yes. What a oh, he was nasty. Man. Yeah. It's so nasty. And then Ulla Rapaz plays uh, uh, Blood Air, and, and uh, yeah, right. there's a lot of. Um, um, Swedish, great Swedish actors in this show as well, but we all get killed, don't we? Uh, we all, <laughs> like, like, oh, there's not, yeah, let's kill the other, let's kill the Swede. <laughs> there's a Norwegian left. Come on. Come kill on. Him. Kill him off. <laughs> Scandinavians don't last that long on The Last Kingdom. No. <laughs> sure. Never. Actually, Heston's actually lasting a while. I know. Kill him <laughs> off. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I'm glad it's still there. I'm glad it's still there. <laughs> that is you know, that is awesome. What's Beckstrom? Is it? Uh, What's that? Are you into hockey? Are you into hockey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big hockey fan. All oh, right. Cool. Yeah. Totally. Yo, how about you? No, I, well, my dad's into hockey very much. Okay. I watch hockey, of course. Uh, more of more of a soccer, football guy. Uh, cool. Cool. Uh, it's really oh. cool. Oh yeah, we love it. I listen to a lot of Swedish rock, by the way. Do you? Okay. I do. Kind of what? Not Europe. <laughs> What's that? Do you? Swedish rock? What, what? Yeah. Not Europe. No. You know that band? No, good. <laughs> I don't, no. No. Oh. The band, I mean, the band Ghost is huge here. 
You know them? Yeah, yeah. Do you like them? Well, I don't listen that much to rock. Okay. Uh, um, but I know those. I, well, of course I do. I do like them, but you know, it's not really not, not my yeah. cup of tea. He's really going more pop now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yepe is a really rock fan. I mean, that's, yeah, we, we, we had a, when we talked with him, we did a band t-shirt day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, he's so much into it. I'm like, and uh, I'm more of a, I don't know. I'm kind of like an indie guy, you know. Indie okay, music. cool. Teenager, I was like Morrissey, the Smiths fan. Oh, uh, cool. You know that guy. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I, was, so, I play the piano and I play jazz as well. So, uh, oh, so nice. Cool. Mix of everything, you know. I do listen to rock, uh, but not usually. Uh, cool. So, do you I listen to the birds? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say Beyonce. I thought Beyonce. Yeah, I totally <laughs> thought. <laughs> just single ladies in the morning. Just single. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so talk to us about some of your other big passions um, outside of uh, acting. <laughs> so music is one big passion. I like yeah. to I write music, cool. and but I don't. I haven't. I'm not gonna. You know. Um, there's no deep, there's nothing, there's nothing out and I'm not gonna, I I like doing it to myself. I, acting is just so, you work with, always you work with like betterments and you have to like perform and stuff like that. So creatively when it comes to different things like painting or, or playing music, I do it just for me, uh, which I'm doing and I don't feel like capitalizing on it because you need to have a hobby. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, in the beginning, acting was my hobby, and now it becomes my profession. And now, so I need to find a new hobby. That's that's interesting. That is yeah. interesting. <laughs> totally interesting. Yeah, I, I write music too. I find it a, a, to be a great, great release. But um, but yeah, if it that's interesting to think that if it got huge someday somehow, um, then would I have to find something else to be my hobby? That's that's an interesting thought. Something constructive that doesn't work, right? Yeah. You know, you don't have the deadline for it. You know. Totally. Yeah. What do you do you write on the piano? Is that what you write music for? Piano and my ukulele. Um I was just see if it's little not Ooh. it's not in oh. and I I like developing scripts and uh and I was co directing a short film, working on another one right now, so I like being on the other side of the camera. Yeah, cool. And of course, um I mean, every day I'm I'm on uh, uh, a spiritual path. I'm not religious, but I do like to meditate. Uh, so that's cool. that's very. It takes a lot of time. Yeah, I mean, it's that's work itself to um, uh, clear your and head. <laughs> I mean, uh, and compa- compassion. You know, <laughs> it's kind yeah. of compassionate for yourself uh, to to just sit with, I heard today someone was saying like, uh, well, my, uh, my sons are, he's meditating and his mother was asking, what's that? I don't know. It's just, well, I'm glad he's not sitting, uh, at home doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's I think like meditating is something uh, we should probably all do a little bit more of. Yeah. I think that's a good thing. I mean, especially when you work a lot, it's, uh, because you see, when you see, well, when you, when you sit in your trailer, I have my ukulele or I have myself and I can just sit and meditate and just be in my practice, which is so good. And books and, you know, so you just all, you need to create that inner room and that consciousness for yourself. So you could just be mm. open when it comes to work, you know, and, and then when you have to perform and you have to do, you know, yeah. better just achieve something you need to just like Ooh, what's happening right now uh in the world this is just perfect time to just um uh be be um, get in tune with yourself a little bit reflect upon yeah. yourself totally totally agree with you that's that's a good point um we, we talked a little bit about that raw fight scene that you had at the end of season two with uh and we talked about the choreography but can you tell us anything else about what you brought in because that scene made us want to cry. If I don't know, maybe Steve cried. I but it, it was really raw, 
Um, as far as like the brotherly emotions, can you talk to that a little bit? Um, what Bjorn brings to that scene is just, um, uh, I mean, he's a genius actor, I think. Uh, and he, he brings a lot of um, desperation to that. Siegfried is so desperate. So he brings a lot of desperation to that one. And, and it, echoes, it echoes with Eric, with Eric and, you know, resonates with him. He just goes, ah, you know, it's desperation. Uh, is this the right path? Should, you know, I've done my, this is my, I picked her and not you. And I have to stick with it now. And, uh, and it's, yeah, that's probably the, the, it's just an open wound, you know? Yeah. So you like, this is, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to choose her and not you. Uh, and, uh, and I know it's going to cost my, you know, my life. And, uh, uh, and he, he doesn't want to, of course he doesn't want to kill his own brother. Uh, But I guess when everything was just burning, I mean, there's no CGI or anything. Just it burnt. I mean, they were burning the barn as we were fighting (laughs) and you just felt the fire and the the heat. You just go for it. Uh, That's what I was saying. My pace was just like, Oh, it's burning. I'm going to finish this. Don't kill me in the end. And, uh, uh, man, he like and punches your heart with his knife hand. Knife hand. Oh yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I know. And that's so I, I love that part. Um when he's actually he's taking care of that knife, you know, when he's just like Oh, it's a great scene. He's helping you him know, take it off. Uh, yeah. Yes. Take it off and he's he's taking care of his brother. So he's actually taking care of the weapon that's gonna kill him in the end. Uh uh and just wow. Crack. Yeah. So you just like stay with that. I don't know if that's might be something subconscious for people when they watch is like, well, oh no, no. So. You know. He's so he's actually he's moving closer for every episode uh to his own death. Uh that's, that's a yeah. brilliant kind of uh little detail there. I like that a Absolutely, lot. Absolutely, yeah. I like that a lot. And when he's screaming, he's like, ah, oh! he's like he's taking control over uh, Siegfried is like, what are you taking control now? You know, he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> what's That's going cool. on? Another, another cool scene with Eric is um, at the camp when Bjorn does lose his hand and, and you clearly Eric has a, has a very high medical knowledge um, and, and just cauterizes that thing super quick. Um, very well done. Puts it right on um, fire. <laughs> yeah. That's where we kind of learn that, that Eric, how much he cares for his brother right there. You know? Oh Yeah. And he would do, any, do anything for his brother. He would die for his brother right there uh, on the spot. And uh, so, yeah, so he doesn't care when he runs, you know, when he chops his hand off, you know, and he goes, you know, puts it in the fire. He, he could die as well. I mean, they could just, you know, cut him in two just by yeah. you know, standing there, you know, on his knees, uh, close to the fire. I was thinking about that. Well, why don't they kill me now as well? Uh, or Eric. Uh, but it's true. He's just like, he would do any, anything for his brother at that, you know, yeah. wow. That day it was just like, they had like massive rain. I remember that. Wow. It was gritty. There's a picture of me and Yeppe that is actually us standing just like, <laughs> I think it's on social media. <laughs> we're actually like, it's, <laughs> we're just like, Wow, what a day. And that day, I was actually sitting, uh, you know, you sit and you you rethink stuff that you did. Maybe I should have done differently, whatever. Mm. And you try, You sometimes you're just a bit hard on yourself and just like, okay. oh, I could have done differently and stuff like that. So I was just sitting and Bjorn was sitting as well. So we're just sitting, <laughs> you know, next to one another, like next to each other, sitting like this. Like, <laughs> like so, and and Yep is coming, and he goes like, "Oh, well, I'm just gonna say I'm do I'm having, uh, uh, I'm having you know the best day of my life. I'm I get to, I get to, uh, play. I'm a Viking. I get to you know this is my dream come true. 
as a kid, you know, I never dreamt that I was going to do this. And just like, like mocking us for sitting there, like, you know, <laughs> come on, we just like, we were in the mood, right? you know? Uh, and of course, of course, he's so, he's so damn right about that. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a dream come true to, to do a show like this. And, uh, and uh, then we don't care, you know, they, they pour like uh, gallons of water on top of you. And <laughs> yeah, those rain machines. The rain machines were just, oh God. Um, but it looks cool, doesn't it? It oh looks cool. And I saw, I guess there was uh, iPlayer or something on BBC iPlayer, probably. They added some parts of BBC shows together, like, okay. I don't know, commercial. And then they use that part when when Eric says something, release my brother, <laughs> whatever. Him, me. Right? Like a funny, you know, they like what the <laughs> uh, quite funny. Uh, it's a good scene. It's a good scene. Yeah. John East was uh, directing that one, and he's uh, he's a really really Man. good director. Wow. His name keeps coming up when these talks. I mean, the job he does. People like him, Levente Lejac, um, Chaz Bain, oh. Their names just keep coming up. They just do a fantastic yeah. job. This is great, yeah, yeah. And I remember John is so, I mean, he, he doesn't, he's not a talker, you know, he's a doer and he's, he's got this mood board and whatever he just works on. And I was sitting on my horse going like, John, I was thinking da 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 and I would go, oh, Seafood, da da da, you know. <laughs> so, and he goes, huh. and he walks away. It's like, no, <laughs> nothing. He's like, okay, I'm just gonna go, okay. Don't do anything, just act, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, um, uh, you just trust that man uh, yeah. with your heart. He's, he's, a, he's, he's a great director. Interesting. Very interesting. Is there anything else that you brought in that like wasn't in the script or wasn't supposed to be part of your character um, that you personally brought into him? Uh, when I was just doing, having scenes with, with Yeppe or Simon yeah. as Doc or um there was some, always something new that happened and you would just go with it uh so i wasn't really no one was really prepared of but i guess the playfulness that was uh that needed needed to be there cool. especially with the brothers as well because i mean they've been playing their whole life together they've been like they've been growing up and been having fun and play you know yeah people are killing one another you know it's it's war and it's just like you can still have a good time they should, of course, one hundred percent like the cross scene. Yeah, so I think we added stuff there, me and, and me and Bjorn for that the cross scene. I, I don't know. I, I guess you will have Bjorn on the show as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'd, I'd love to hear what he has to say about it, but it. Yeah. it I I don't think I, I you know Eric wouldn't be anything without uh, Bjorn or Siegfried. I was just going with the flow with the character. So, cool. uh, and one other awesome scene that we haven't touched on yet um, is when Ethelred, you pretty much face off against him. When he comes and, to uh, barter for Ethelfled at at yeah. uh, Dunholm. No, is it Bamf Bamflat? Bamflat. Yeah, it's Bamflat. Uh, Bamflat. Yes. Yeah, he comes to barter for her. And it's actually kind of a role reversal where Bjorn's the more reserved one and you're the one going headstrong in with uh ethel red uh because yeah. he's ethel fled's husband slash abuser that you found out uh and that, that was a really cool scene where you get to let loose yeah toby's a great guy and i and um i didn't want to go too hard on you know um on him the scene was more for secret to realize oh he's got something there's something going on Mm. Uh, this is the scene where Secret realizes, mm. oh, wow, why is he so... And Uhtred, too, notices this, yeah. yeah. Both Uhtred, uh, exactly. Uhtred and Secret. Um, and Uhtred, of course, you could just see, like, it's like, hmm, what's going yeah. on? And, and <laughs> I love that scene because Waylon was in it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> There's Waylon. Not screaming at Toby, but it was just like, when, where's Waylon? Waylon! Yeah, yeah it's so... <laughs> but you can just see your anger. You can just see it on your yeah. face. And it's awesome. 
It's yeah. awesome. And, and how hard it is for you to not just start wailing on this guy as he walks past you and goes to talk to Ethel Flood. Mm, yeah. Like you could just see oh, that you just want to. Yeah. Like, why do you go back to this? Guy? Please don't go back to this guy. Well, you know, yeah. Some people do get back, go back to these, you know, people. Mm, yeah. God, it's and then, yeah, in reality, some people reality. can't escape those abusive relationships no. and not yet, not just when it's uh, a King or a Lord of a, of a country. So yeah. That's yeah. why that's why everyone needs to get themselves an Eric, right? They need to get themselves that they need to get themselves solid, an Eric. dependable Eric. <laughs> you know, oh, pig fart was it? Uh, the pig pig's fart, ass. Yeah, the pig's ass oh. farts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That was great. Oh, go fart that yourself. Was... Mm. Uh. <laughs> that was fantastic, and I'm just imagining the show with you as Uhtred now. Had you gotten that role? Wow. Yeah, yeah. That'd be, I don't think that would be a bad choice either. I mean, obviously, Alexander Draymond does a fantastic job, but that would have been, yeah, that'd have been an interesting... Yeah. Um, well, it would be different. You know, Alex is like... Having him on set, you know, uh, he remembers all the names on set. And I... That's he's cool. like... He's a good, I mean, he's a great actor and everything, but, you know, just the fact that his social comp competence is just, like, above. You know, wow. it's just like, he knows every, all the names he knew. You know, if you, if you have a sibling or a family or relative, uh, you know, someone who visit, you know, come wow. visit on set or is in town, you know, two weeks later, he just asks about... Um, that person's name it's like how is uh so you know and that's really uh um that's how you that's build cool. that's how you build trust you know uh especially on set you don't act or pretend that you're interested you're actually 100 percent interested and uh so yeah. alex is like i there's a reason he's a son of utrid and utrid and utrid you know because it's just <laughs> like, <laughs> he's uh, yeah you know he's 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 the show uh, he is, and that's cool that the leader does stuff like that too. He, mm. Mm. That's very cool. That's very cool to hear. So, what are some of your other goals as far as acting goes? Well, right now my goals are to find a place to just start developing my own ideas and and stuff like that. To work behind camera as well as uh, cool in front of the camera. So I've been traveling a lot. Uh, there's been a lot of traveling and. Uh, I might go back to your country as well soon again, because I was like, basically based in, in California just before this happened. Can you tell us what you're doing in LA? Were you doing a project uh, there or something? A project? Uh, well, now I'm going to stay in Europe, uh, potentially to work on a project that is postponed till <laughs> you never know. Yeah. But that's probably, it's, it's not in Budapest, but it's, uh, I think it's going to be in Prague or something like cool. those countries where you actually do medieval things. Oh, uh, so there'll be something uh, quite yeah. close to sword fighting and stuff like that. Um, Ooh. Okay. Be, no, I'm not gonna. <laughs> no, don't say anything you're not supposed to. But uh, uh, yeah, so I, I'm just gonna stick around. I think it was uh, Jeff Bridges who said, you know, he always. He wanted to be like a cockroach in the business. I'm like, who's that guy? Oh no, that cockroach is there again. So I'm just, <laughs> cockroach gonna keep coming back, and I, I see myself as as that cockroach now. You know that I just like, oh, you never get rid of that guy, do you? Uh, <laughs> so, so, so yeah, I just want to keep on just working. I'm gonna read a script now today and just like see if it's interesting, and then you know. Cool, cool. I love that part when you can actually uh, communicate with people just before. I do miss stage, which is a lot of rehearsals and, you know, uh, working on, on, on shows. Uh, creatively, I, I just want to go, go deeper. Um, cool. Very cool. You always feel like, okay, you want to do uh off or something on stage and then you also want to do marvel or whatever just play a goofy character uh yeah. i enjoy doing a lot of comedy as well okay um things i've done with like a flea bag or yeah flea bag right or 
recently comedies in Finland that I did, like a feature film that's out in August. Things are, you know, that I really enjoy doing because it's just like you get it, you get away from yourself and your comfort, your comfort zone. You just go, oh, you know, and make fun about yourself. You know, you know, it's all about it's everything is a play, and, and you just as long as you feel like you're having fun, yeah, then you should just continue doing it. But if it's just like a struggle and you have to survive, mm. stop doing it. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a very good point with anything in life, really. Anything else that you can tell us about that we could be excited for coming out in the future? Oh, uh, I can't say right now. Okay. I mean, okay. Well, it's hard. It's hard to say because yeah. it's, uh, we're we're in the middle of this uh, crazy pandemic, and uh, but you know. Keep your eyes open. We will. Well, we'd certainly like to see you take on another kind of medieval role. That would be pretty sweet someday. Maybe yeah. that'll happen. Who knows? Force um, ghost in the last kingdom, maybe. Force right? ghost. That would be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> the fans want it. So, um, yeah. well, I love the fans. But seriously, I just like, you know, we, we connect on social media and stuff like that and, and uh, Facebook and Instagram and everything. And I really, I'm grateful for for the show and and all the fans and that people really watch the show and see it, you know more than once if you want to you know sometimes it's like oh I'm watching uh, season two again I'm like wow uh, oh my god we've done that <laughs> three yeah. four or five times for three, us three four or five hundred <laughs> times I don't know <laughs> yeah it's so cool I'm yeah I'm, I'm I'm yeah I'm blessed that you do that and so. Um, I feel blessed. It's um, it's a great show, and I wish sometimes I wish I was around to be a part of uh, uh, you know, fighting for the love of of Ethel Fled. But um, when she comes to Valhalla, um, yeah, she just needs to die a warrior's death, I think. Convert yeah. maybe, and then. Um, <laughs> So we always ask our guests, um, cause we're a podcast about what we love to watch. And, uh, could you tell us a little bit about what you love to watch movies or shows? All right. Um, what did I watch recently that I liked? Uh, when I was, when I was always like sick and in bed when I was at high school and stuff like that, I always watched Jason Bourne movies. Oh the yeah. Book. I was just like, it's like, okay, I'm going to watch talking about you know repeatedly watching a film or a show or whatever uh and shows like the wire but recently i watched zero 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 that i really enjoyed and you watched that one uh i think it's a smart series it takes place in 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 italy uh, mexico and the u.s it's about the drug industry and and, and oh, okay uh, also and stuff like that um i do like barry oh i've not seen that barry? i know what you're talking oh about. yeah the uh the but... hitman right on <laughs> hbo right that's so funny the russians in barry that guy who plays the russian he's it's just like he's hilarious he's so funny we'll have to add that one to the list put that on the list it's yeah. a good one um what do you watch Oh, are we like um, The Last Kingdom? I don't know if you've heard of it. <laughs> no. Um, I like like Better Call Saul, Breaking Bad, you know, Rick and Morty, that kind of stuff. That's, oh, yeah. So good. Yeah. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't watched Better Call Saul yet, the last. Yeah, have you seen the other seasons? Oh, yeah. So, okay. Uh, last one, yeah. This last season was awesome. Oh, was it? Like that. Yeah, it was really, really good. I thought the last season before this one kind of dipped a little bit. Like, it was really, really good. Kind of had – it was a good season, just a little bit slower. This season, yeah, it was sweet. Oh, is that narcissist? I just, like – you just get, like, oh, angry watching him, you know? <laughs> oh, it's oh, amazing God. how it toys with your feelings. <laughs> but, yeah, right? It is. Uh, but seriously, as you, there's a lot of – uh good shows coming right in you know especially on netflix um yeah. a lot of um things from scandinavia and and cool it's interesting to watch the shows from from europe yeah uh, 
in Spain. There's always like a heist movie or heist series. Oh, the like, money heist? Yeah, well, if you if you look at it, like all the the Spanish Netflix shows are like heist movies, and then there's this Nord, still the crime Nordic noir. Ah, oh, cool. Um, uh, from uh, and and the Valhalla murders and stuff like that, Iceland. And, oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I saw that on Netflix. Like, mm. and the United um, States puts out things like Tiger King and yeah. <laughs> exactly, just like. <laughs> Oh, Tiger King. It's so, I love that one. Did you uh, watch it all? Yeah. Did she do it? No, I would say. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I watched that one. And uh, Parasite is a good film. Everyone Parasite likes it. Parasite was good. Yeah. I really, I really enjoyed it. I yeah. didn't think it deserved to win Best Picture over Joker, but it was a good movie. No. No. You think... You, Okay, well, I, I'm glad that he won. I got the, you know, he's doing yeah. a, such a great job in that film. Yeah. Uh, Todd Phillips is a good director. Oh, my God. Uh, I was watching Due Date the other day again. See, I saw that one. That's a and good one. That's an underrated one, I think. Underrated one, right? It's so, yeah. it's, it's uh, when he drinks that coffee. It's just like, it's the parts that are so... And that is, you know, it's, it's, it's changed his name to Tremblay, become, you know, more successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not a good name. Uh, it's Tremblay. What do you think about that? Should I change my name? <laughs> it's so interesting with, uh, to see, I was watching, when I was younger, I watched a lot of Todd Phillips and, you know, um, uh, those kind of films that were just like, feel good, you know. You know right. Old school swingers. Now right. when I watch it, I go, hmm, not so cozy, right? Uh, because it's just like, <laughs> but it's something you grow up with and then, then you realize, okay, you know, uh, so, and I hope there will be more films and series in, in and I can see a development and uh, that there is actually a more female gaze in, in series and movies. Uh, yeah, totally. Yeah. If there's something that will come out of this uh, um, pause we're having right now with, uh, you know, when people are in lockdown, it's just going to be a lot of new shows. I think so. Uh, it will take a while uh, for if, before everything opens up in Europe. Yeah. They, they shoot The Last Kingdom and all the, all the different shows, um, films, stuff like that. But it will all, I know it's going to start in, in August and they're going to start filming and they will just like, the pace will be um, rapid. Rapid, and uh, you will see a lot of shows at the end of this year or, or the beginning of the next year. So, That's uh, awesome. Yeah, I we'll look forward to it. Um, cool. I'm looking to see the next season of uh, The Last Kingdom as well. Oh, yeah, we can't wait for that. And hopefully, we'll have a little Eric Force Ghost on it um, <laughs> on season five when that comes out someday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, cool. Uh, we had a blast. Thank you for coming on. We yeah, appreciate it. It was lovely to see you and uh uh this was great fun. Everyone out there listening and watching this, you can check out Christian. We'll have his IMDB link down below. Find him on social media. Uh great guy. Check him out in season two of The Last Kingdom. He's also got a lot of other stuff coming up. Uh we'll see after quarantine uh where that goes. Uh, but yeah, thanks again, Christian. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you for watching as well. Uh, I mean, you're precious. You know that. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you. Awesome. Precious. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. And thank you for all everyone who's been supporting us. Uh, please subscribe, follow, like, and uh, we'll have more to come. But for now, goodbye from the Screen Chronicles and Christian Hillborg. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.